It really looks like TBS is trying to change its style and completely give the channel a facelift. And these animated shows are a step in the right direction, in my opinion. And one of the most exciting of these is Close Enough, a show that essentially is about the transition. Guys, I know we've talked about this a lot before, okay, but bear with me. I think we have really good reason to believe that Close Enough is finally coming out in 2019. Get the champagne, yeah! Go, go get the party maker noise things that no one likes. Guys, Close Enough is here. I'm not crying, you're crying. That's right guys, after multiple years at this point of waiting and speculating, times of high hopes and times of low depression, Close Enough is out. I know, c calm down. So you might be asking yourself, Nemo, no it's not. I have HBO Max, it comes out in July. Well, you're a fool. No, I'm just kidding. It actually premiered at a film festival, so if you want to pay like $17, you can watch the first episode right now. And I highly recommend you do, it delivers. Now there's a lot of cartoon mythos out there, and there's a lot of cartoons that I would put in the legendary category, but Close Enough was more like an urban legend. We weren't sure if it was gonna happen, then it probably wasn't, then it was. Then we waited, and now it's here. That's kind of how it went. It was originally supposed to be on TBS, now it's on HBO Max. You know the story, we've hashed this out so many times. What was crazy to learn is that the trailer they originally released was all fake footage, because JG Quintel loves playing with our minds and breaking our heart. That absolute stud. Love you, JG. Listen, guys, I don't think that my expectations have been higher for anything ever. So when I sat down and watched this, I was like, this is gonna be what it is, it's gonna be really good, don't let the hype get to you. And I am happy to say, I didn't even have to, because I enjoyed the entire thing. So, in case you don't know, Close Enough is J.J. Quintel, the creator of Regular Show's cartoon follow-up, where they finally let him swear, essentially. If you love the concept of Regular Show, being two slackers, and having antics in the park, drinking soda, you know what I mean? Then you will absolutely love Close Enough, because it's just Regular Show, except about people in their early 20s. That's right, we finally got an animated sitcom about early adulthood that's so exciting. I know we've seen it before in other places, but it's not touched on a lot, and it makes me really happy. I guess technically that's what Regular Show was about, but now they're actually humans in an apartment, also in Los Angeles, I'll touch on that later. There's been a lot of animated sitcoms, especially animated parents, but this is entirely new. We're finally seeing young, cool parents at the center of a cartoon, and I love them. Those two parents being Josh and Emily, and their daughter Candace, who surprisingly enough tags along for their adventures. These two aren't Marge and Homer, they're cool, they smoke weed. Josh is a game designer. Emily has a job. I don't know if she really touched on what that was. Along the ride are their two friends, Bridget and Alex. Bridget being like the fun, sexy one is the vibe I'm getting. And Alex is just, well, he's a rare breed. This episode, he was beefing with stripper clowns. Did I mention the stripper clowns? Okay, not to draw parallels here, but it's a lot like regular show in the sense where it's a grounded premise. These two young parents, in an apartment, making ends meet, you know, doing that young adult thing, paying off student loans, except the problems that they face are anything but normal. It's a great premise, it totally works, and watching these characters interact with each other in this episode, I mean, the dynamics are, are pretty much perfect. They all balance each other really nice, their back and forths are hilarious. So without further ado, let's talk about what happened in this episode. The episode opens with Emily in a doctor's appointment because she has overwhelming stress. This comes from her packed schedule, about being a working mom, all the sorts of things that come with being in your early 20s and having a doctor. Daughter. Meanwhile, Josh is at home debuting his new game, which is like a VR ladder game. Side note, I think it's so cool that he's a game designer. It's such a cool job, and I'm sure they're gonna explore that even more. I was not surprised at all when I saw some 8-bit video game action up in here, as that was so common in regular show. But this time, it's VR, and it's kind of updated. That's the thing, Close Enough is surprisingly trendy. Where you look at regular show, where it takes place in an ambiguous park in an ambiguous city, Close Enough very much takes place in Southern California. They say SoCal, there's hipsters. There's palm trees. Do you sense the autobiographical nature of this show yet? Do you pick up on it? Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, Emily comes home talking about how she's absolutely fine, which Josh senses is not right. And this is a great scene where you can just see their dynamic bounce off each other. They're so adorable. I already love them. They're such a good balance. Josh seems to be the calm one. Emily seems to be like the structured but get stressed out one. And she gets even more stressed out when they find out they don't have food, leading to Josh being an incredible husband and father and offering to take all of her chores for the day so that she can relax, which essentially means hotboxing in the car. There's a lot of weed in this show. While they're doing that, Alex and Josh go to complete their chores, the last one being getting a ham, but they find out that there's no more hams. This is the great example of the JG Quintel formula. Something as simple as buying a ham will spiral into something crazy. Speaking of crazy, this is probably the craziest scene in the entire show. Essentially, Alex has beef 
with clown strippers. Now, if you haven't guessed by now, close enough is for adults. It's extremely raunchy, and I love that in absolutely every sense of the word. Now, I'm not a big fan of adult shows being raunchy just for the sake of it. I actually think it's kind of tired and played out. And luckily, Close Enough has enough smart humor to balance it out, and a lot of the jokes genuinely made me laugh. And when it's so offensive that it's shocking, it does work in that aspect. But man, I gotta give them props. This is in the regular show art style. Nothing's changed. JG Quintel is voicing the main character. If you pause at any moment, this could be an episode of regular show. That's what makes it so perfect. I never thought I'd hear Mordecai swear, except when he swore that one time, but we don't talk about that. So they go to retrieve the ham from these like corrupt ham hipsters. It's insane. Very LA, I assume. I don't live there, but I want to. But they get caught by the guards, and then things take a darker turn as they are almost ground up into meat. Meanwhile, Emily and Bridget run into Candace's teacher, leading to Emily freak out, only to find out that he also smokes weed. They have a heart to heart about her being stressed, and she decides to go out and be really relaxed all day in somehow the most stressful way possible. Back at the ham plant, thanks to Josh's mind working, they manage to break out, and they steal some hams, but eventually get caught trying to drive away. The whole thing gets settled with Josh's VR ladder game, which they end up winning in the craziest way possible, and life is good. And then it ends on probably the raunchiest joke I've ever seen in a cartoon ever, so that's, that's awesome. Now this is very much a first episode of a show, and by that, I mean that it really focuses on Josh and Emily, while keeping Bridget and Alex the kind of side characters, which I'm sure they will be developed more later on in the show, and I'm very excited for them to get their own episodes. I loved every second of this. I thought it was absolutely hilarious, and again, I loved the characters. Bridget's calm energy totally balances out Emily's manic, stressed, single mom energy, and Alex is just hilarious. Everything he says I laugh at, so I cannot wait to see more from him. And again, it's just so refreshing to see this kind of dynamic in a cartoon or any sitcom period. Something about cool young parents just makes me hopeful for the future. A lot of depictions of people with kids are like so one way and so bleak. I love seeing this, it's so fresh and exciting. On top of that, they picked the craziest problem for them to have to deal with. I don't know how they came to hipster hamburglers and stripper clowns, that feels like a writing exercise, but they pulled it off and it was hilarious. The biggest takeaway from this entire episode though is that I want more. I wanna see more from these characters. I wanna know what Candace is all about. What is she like? What other problems are they gonna face? And this is like the first show that I'm actually hyped is on streaming because I want all of it. I need it right now, but unfortunately, we're gonna have to wait. Still, this isn't just a step in the right direction for adult animation, this is a leap. If you watch any second of regular show, you know that they were not writing for kids some of the time, and that's why it was so good and loved by so many. JJ understood better than anyone that you shouldn't talk down to kids, and now he doesn't have to talk down to anybody because he's talking to an adult audience who hopefully will love it. On top of that, you cannot forget that the kids like me who grew up with regular show are in college now, and this is the type of stuff we're watching. The demographic could not line up more perfectly. I know tons of people that have been re-watching regular show, and I cannot wait to like slide this in front of them and be like, hey, if you like that, check this out, and like their minds will be blown, I guarantee you. But that's not to say I want to completely tie this to regular show. This is its own separate thing, and they did a great job of making it feel completely different. Everything from the cast to the location. It's all separate, it's all its own show. If it wasn't for the art style and his voice, I would not have guessed that this was by him at all. On top of that, I am excited that it's on streaming. It was originally going to air on TBS, and I had a bad feeling in my gut because of the weird way that Cable's going. But the future's binging, and the future is streaming, at least for now, and that's exactly where this show's gonna be. It's actually really hopeful too because I've seen a huge push for it on social media by HBO Max. Like I'm seeing Twitter ads, the whole thing. It's it's really exciting. They don't want this show to fall by the wayside and I hope to God it doesn't. I'm gonna get the word out as much as I can. If you are not excited for Close Enough, you should be. In the world of adult animation, there's just not a lot of shows that stick. A lot of them come and go. If anything, Rick and Morty has been like the most successful one in recent years. And that came out like eight years ago. It's about time we see a new type of adult animated sitcom. And that's exactly what Close Enough feels like. Could this be a live action sitcom? No, it couldn't. They're doing things that you can only do in cartoons. And that's such an edge over any other show. These plots couldn't take place in New Girl. You couldn't see this on Last Man Standing. Actually, does anyone even watch that? I cannot wait to see what they continue to cook up in terms of crazy plot lines. And maybe even in over overarching story. I don't know if they will, but if they do, I will support it. Either way, Close Enough is fresh, it's hilarious, and it's a step in the right direction for adult animation. I cannot wait for when it premieres on HBO Max on July 9th. Hopefully you are too. But that being said, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Have you seen Close Enough yet? Have you not? Let us know in those comments down below or tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me at It's Retro Nemo. If you want to consider helping out the Roundtable, you can become a member of the channel or support us on Patreon and give us exclusive access to scripts and avatars. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo. This is a Close Enough Review, and I will see you next time.
Adiós.